What you're about to see is probably the single biggest mistake I have made with Moira so far. The single most controversial part of this entire series. This is certainly not my proudest moment as a dog trainer. Girl. This is Moira and I'm Zach George. Moira the German Shepherd Dog is looking for a home and I've only got two weeks to teach her how to behave so that someone will be willing to adopt her. Okay, we have a situation. And as you can see, it's not going to be easy. She jumps excessively, lunges at almost any distraction. Moira loves to bark and she definitely pulls on leash and uses her teeth to interact with the world a little too inappropriately. I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed. If that was a dog, she would be like, I'm not paying attention to you, I'm paying attention to that. I will train this dog. Look at this loose leash right now. Shake! Yes! Much better. Yes. Look at me. Is she getting trained? This is reality dog training. Moira has been really reactive to birds. In fact, you might recall that before she came to me, she had actually killed a couple of chickens. But I feel like we have made a lot of progress lately, so I'm hoping to take her out to a park that has a whole bunch of different birds. But understanding why dogs like Moira like to chase other animals is really critical too. That's why I've been making sure that Moira has an outlet for her desire to run after things, chase them, and yes, even bite them. Something that's really been working for us is making sure that Moira has lots of new and exciting things to run after and chase. This really seems to keep her interest and satisfied. Both Super Chewer and BarkBox are monthly subscription boxes, and they'll make living with your dog much more pleasant for both of you. Moira is definitely a Super Chewer dog, and the theme of this box is Best of Super Chewer. You can see how heavy duty some of these toys are. If you get a Super Chewer box, just cancel your gym membership. You just lift these. Oh, I remember this one. And so you can put treats and things in there. And the robot classic, I know Moira loves the robot toys. In this box, you get two chews. Super chewers for dogs who require more heavy duty toys. And bark boxes for dogs that are a little easier on their toys, but they're still pretty tough. Don't get me wrong. This is best of bark box. Look at this. There's nachos. I challenge you to find any more original dog toys on the planet than Bark Toys. Both boxes include really top-notch, high-quality treats every month, too. I'm gonna definitely give this to my own dog. Their attention to detail is incredible. All of you can get a free Bark Box, Super Chewer box, or both when you sign up for a monthly subscription using my special link, superchewer.com slash dog training or barkbox.com slash dog training. I'll have a link below in the description. We're here at a park in New Orleans. It must be migration season because we got more than we bargained for today. All right, well, we wanted to come and train around birds today because she has an issue with impulse control. Uh, I think we've come to the right place. Do we know New Orleans or what? When Moira arrives at a new place, she is pretty anxious and she pulls a lot on her leash and I'm generally pretty tolerant of this with a dog who's pretty new to training like Moira is. But it is a sign that she's a little worked up here so I'll be keeping an eye on that. But you know, you would expect a high energy dog to be wound up and pulling right now at this point in their training. So we're surrounded. We're like on an island of birds right now. We've got them over here. I don't know that she's detected all these birds over here. So I think this is gonna be my sweet spot that I wanna work at because it's the farthest away from the birds. And right now she can see these birds being pretty good. So I'm pretty encouraged. The real trick is going to be, okay, can I get her to pay attention to me while we're out here? So that's what we'll find out soon enough. But you're gonna take a minute to acclimate, young lady. And I really feel like Moira and I are hitting our stride right now. I feel like we're getting through to one another. We're starting to understand how each other works a little bit better. And so I'm optimistic that we can have a successful training session today, but I'm not giving our test anything like this yet. So this will be interesting. I mean, you can just look at the ground. It's covered in feathers and bird poop. So since we've only been out here for a few minutes, I really wanna make sure that Moira can sniff around and check it out before I just start asking her to do things. But I don't want you to eat bird poop. Here, come on, let's go this way, come on. Good, pretty good. She was cooperative right there. I didn't even offer her a treat or anything. So that's nice, good. I think she heard what I said. You mean I can get a treat? Of course you can. So that's good. Right there, I'm not, I didn't ask for it. She offered her attention. When your dog offers their attention like that, let them know that you appreciate it. 
So I have not seen a significant outburst today, not one so far from her. And one of my goals for the remainder of this training time is to make sure that I'm training in a variety of different places. So that's why we're here. She also is very intrigued by dogs as we've seen. But again, I put myself in a position to be farther away from the dogs. You see this? Moira's not the only dog interested in ducks. Here. Yes, I'll take it. I mean, they're pretty far away, but that's what I want. Moira, okay, come. Whoa, all right, I just led her to some ducks, I guess. I feel like she's adjusted now, so why don't we get into training and see how she does? Can she come? Can she stay? Can she listen to her basics? Will she do her tricks in a place like this? That remains to be seen. Let me see, I'm trying to read her right now. I feel like if I were to say, Moira, come, that she wouldn't be too motivated. I'm gonna ask her to do something easier than coming to me while she's distracted by the ground. I'm gonna ask for a look at me. Yes, look at me, yes, very good. Just easy stuff, right? You know, maybe you would ask your dog to sit. She's doing really good with stand, stay, yes. Stay, yes, give me a sit, good. Just kind of going with the flow here. This is really good, she's demonstrating that she's willing to pay attention. Let's see how her recall is doing when I've got her dead focused on me, let's see. Uh-oh, that bird has definitely given our drone a look. Moira, here, sit, stay, yes, here, okay, come, good, sit, stay, yes, good girl, nice work. I'd like to see how her lie down is doing as well. Hand signal, no treat in this hand. Yes, I'll take it. Let me see if I can get that looking a little bit sharper. I'm really encouraged because we're in this highly distracting place. We even have dogs over here that are walking by here. And of course we have that drone flying around as an added distraction and she's doing really well with that. Well, we did have a drone flying around. <laughs> the drone just crashed over here. Let's see what's happening. Whoa, wow. These are damaged here. I don't know where that one went. Okay, let's go replace these propellers and get that drone back up so you can have a full appreciation of this challenging environment. This goes to show literally anything can happen. I mean, a drone can fall out of the sky during one of your training sessions. And the better your communication is with your dog and the more experience that you've purposefully given them, the more likely it is that those types of events won't throw them off. She was pretty distracted by it all, but she's doing quite well with the drone. I'm glad we introduced it well. I see there are some birds over here. I want to practice getting our attention on me around those birds right there. If they'll stay put, I don't know. We'll find out. I don't want to get right on top of them. So right here, I'm struggling to get her attention. I mean, she's really intrigued by this new patch of grass over here. Now, throughout this lesson, you're going to see tension on the leash sometimes. Now, because this is sometimes confusing, I want to make it very clear here that I'm using her leash and harness just to keep control of her. And I'm not using it as a tool to deliver corrections. So I've got a couple of choices. I could sit here, let her take it in for a little bit, but I think I've given her enough time today. So I'm gonna to opt to try to get her attention on me back here where it's a little bit easier. Moira, here. Good, yes, good. Here. Yes, good. I'm gonna up my rate of reinforcement here because I'm losing her very easily. Yes. I'm using real small treats so I can rapidly reward her when she's compliant in this borderline state. Come this way. Good, good girl. I love her enthusiastic jog there. Moira. Now you can see that Moira is very distracted here and I'm resisting the urge to pull her towards me. Come, yes, just trying to read her. Yeah, good girl. See how she got in the heel position there. That was pretty nice. Those ducks are still there. They're quite patient. I'm gonna try to park her right about here as we get closer. The fact that she's ignoring them is, well, she was ignoring them. Oh, no, all right, there's our first lunge. I, I want to not have that happen again. Stay. Good girl, yes. Good girl, yeah, you got it. You know what yes means. So look at our working distance from the ducks here. Pretty good. She's getting a little excited here. Sit. Yes, very good. And here, I'm going to let her look at the birds, and then here. Yes, look at me. Good. You're so smart. Moira seems to be doing pretty well at this distance so far, so I'm thinking we can probably get a little bit closer. This looks like a good spot here. Noticing the ducks, again, fine with that. So here, I'm really practicing allowing Moira to look at the ducks, and then I'm practicing calling her away from the ducks. 
It's also a really great way to proof her training in general here. So combining an exercise like leave it with a treat along with a real world distraction like ducks is a fantastic way to strengthen her impulse control. Look at me. So we're combining distractions, artificial distractions with real world distractions. And so really key here is to get her to voluntarily walk away from that kind of distraction, which I'm gonna try to do here, stay here. Okay, this way, good. And that's what you wanna see. Look, loose leash over here, walking away. Didn't have to pull her away. This is huge for Moira. You can see that she's really tempted by all of those birds around her. But the fact that she's able to bring her focus back to me is a giant leap in the right direction. Especially when you consider she's been the type of dog who has at times been unmanageable around birds. Any attention I voluntarily get from her, happy to reward that right now. And so we're trying to counter condition her to understand that when she sees a bird, if she pays attention to us, life is gonna be better than just lunging and being frustrated by pulling out the bird. Of course, this is something that needs to go on for a long time. This is how it looks in the beginning, if things are going well. If your dog looks like they're thinking about it, there's a good chance they might. So be patient after you give a request like that. Yes. I love the voluntary sit. We have some other ducks that have moved in. Here's our wild card, stay. Even here, she was doing sit, stay, and come really well until she started to veer off, at which time I didn't hesitate to put a treat right at her nose in order to get her attention on me. And there's nothing wrong with that. Going back to square one, that is, in dog training, we have to be prepared to take a step back whenever needed. And you might notice I also shortened my leash just to make sure I could keep her from going after the ducks should she react. But I'm still trying to avoid having any tension at all on the leash so that Moira can make this decision on her own. While Moira is in the zone here, I'm gonna rapid fire some stay and come drills while we have these ducks at an ideal distance. And right now, Moira is so zoned in that we can work at a rapid pace. When you start getting instances of that, it's a pretty good sign that you're on the right track. And with a dog like Moira, it can really help keep their attention and optimism up in training if you move at a faster pace like this. Now look, just because she listened to me there, you can see her attention now is drifting back onto these ducks over here and over here. Oh, and there's a dog. Well, welcome to the real world. Moira, here, come on. Here. Yes. There was the slightest amount of tension there, but she was super responsive to it. Sit. Yes. Stay. And this is great too. She needs a lot of practice with dogs. Yes. Did you see that natural look at the dog and then she looked at me? Lie down. Do you remember lie down? No, you just needed a reminder, that's all. Good girl. And look at that, she had trouble with lie down even though that's something she knows almost flawlessly at home. Don't get frustrated with your dog when they seem to not do things that they should know when you're in a different environment. That's normal, it just means you need to give them some more time and practice in environments like that more often. Here, you remember, shake. Yeah, oh, you are such a rock star, young lady. Look at these birds. We got more than we bargained for today. No. Okay. Moira, here. All right, see how she's completely tuning me out? That's always our cue. Too much. Let's go back and make it easier again. Yep. A uh, little, little questionable. Let me let her evaluate from a distance here. Moira, come. Stay. Oh my gosh. Moira, here, come on. Sit. No, okay. Wow, look at that. Sit. Okay, there's my sit, I'll take it. Good job, girl, nice work. Right there, I mean, I tried to get that extra sit. I probably should have been content just to reward her instantly when she came to me. I mean, that is a heck of a bird distraction. Notice, no reaction, no lunging. Distracted, yes. Trying to kill the birds, no. Check, come. Yes. Notice no force there at all. We're getting her to think from the inside out. That's always the preferred way to go. So, I mean, this is kind of the pattern that we're gonna be running through over the next many days with her until hopefully she's able to completely tune them out when I ask for her, but this is really nice. Good girl, Moira. I'm really pleased with her progress on listening to me around distractions such as birds and even dogs in the distance. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? All right, I should probably teach her it's not okay to just start digging and biting the ground. She's pulling up an entire root. Okay, Moira, okay, come on, let's go. Good curl. 
Yes. I think right now she's happy to take the food, but she'd rather be playing right now. That's what I'm reading into all of this behavior. So I need to make sure I'm giving her an outlet. And what a great opportunity to practice a critical skill like fetch in a brand new place for her. I just gave her a BarkBox toy. She goes nuts over these. Slowly reeling her in. I don't want to kill her buzz right now by just reeling her in abruptly. Good girl. Let's see how all of her steps of fetch are looking. Interest in toy. Check. That's good. Let go. Let go. Okay. Better than it was. Sit. Stay. Okay. Yes. Go. Good girl. Chasing it. Returning it in a straight line. Let's see. Come on. Yes, good. Eagerly lets go and awaits the next throw. Let's find out. Let go. Stay. Eagerly awaits the next throw for sure. Okay. She did not know how to fetch when she came here just a week ago. She's picked this up at light speed. By the way, notice how she's tuning out all the distractions of her environment. Looks like she wants to get around to zoomies in right now. Happy to let her do that. Sometimes you just need to let your dog be happy and be a dog, right? In the beginning like this, it's a fine line between saying, I want you to play by the rules versus I want you to have a good time too. So they need a second to absorb all the rules of fetch. Go! Love that she's playing fetch out here. Getting a dog to play fetch in a new place can be a challenge with her, not so much. Focus like this in this type of environment with known distractions like birds to Moira, which are a really high level distraction to her traditionally. The fact that Moira is paying attention to me and paying attention to this toy and she's focused and she's into it and she's making no attempt to chase birds or dogs in the distance is extremely encouraging here. If your dog is that focused on a toy, understand that that is all you need in many cases to teach them virtually anything. Sit, stay. Okay, go get it. Okay. Nice. Really good stay there, huh? So I like to throw in basic requests like sit and stay here and there during fetch, but not constantly. It's a really good way to build value with the fetch toy because she clearly loves it. Come. We continue to practice come when called when she's returning the toy, which is a great way to burn in their brain what that means. Good girl. Here's a good chance to practice a long distance recall. Moira. Come. Yes. Good girl. I was really enthusiastic there because I wanted to get it on the first attempt. I didn't want to start calling her over and over again. So that's why I really went the extra mile, got on the ground, started acting playful with her. Since she kind of veers left, I kind of go right and that encourages her to come closer to me. But I got to catch that toy. Where's your toy? Come. Yes, good girl. You notice something? She left her toy behind. I called her, she came to me. I chose to acknowledge that rather than trying to get her to bring the toy back. When your dog comes to you, especially in a place like this, you've got to really let them know that's the right decision. So be flexible in your training and be prepared to acknowledge those things from your dog. Look at the promise she is showing. If you have a dog that is this focused on a toy, you can teach them virtually anything as long as you're patient and you work with them and you're understanding with them. But when we play fetch with a dog, we're really appealing to what dogs are at their core. They're a species that we essentially created to work in partnership with us. So they have it in them to really listen and fetch satisfies both that physical and mental desire that dogs like Moira often have. You'll also find that if you can get your dog's energy out on your terms, your schedule, they're going to be a lot more compliant in day-to-day -day life. What do you think she's going to do when we go home tonight? She's going to pass out and she's going to sleep great. If you have a high energy dog, it really is worth your while to put in the effort to train them a really solid, reliable fetch. That is chasing after a toy in a straight line, bringing it back in a straight line, letting go and eagerly awaiting the next throw. If you have a dog doing that, the sky is the limit. Moira is showing incredible promise to learn how to heal. Heal is basically where your dog just stays right next to you when you walk. They stop when you stop. They go when you go. And it's a nice way to be able to have your dog behave in urban situations or if you're seeing another dog and you want them close. If you've seen my other videos, you may have seen my own dog Inertia do this in a variety of scenarios. But remember, heal isn't the way to just give your dog a walk. It's reserved for special training and special circumstances. Okay, come here. So we're gonna keep it super casual here. There we go, I'm just luring her into position. I'm gonna start on the right side, I think. Take one step, yes. 
I took a half a step and I rewarded. Yes. Giving her small treats. Yes. Not asking her to heal for a half mile straight away. What are you doing? That's not heal. You're all over the place. Let's redirect her back into position here. Good. Just, you see that lower motion? Look how responsive she is. Not quite. I'll take it. So at first with heel, I like to start just one step at a time. And then as they've demonstrated, they're understanding that. They're taking a step and they're waiting for their treat and they're looking up. Then I'll try and take two or three steps. Now here comes the test. What if we can get her to go really slow? Wow, good girl. Yes. Here. Easy here. At this point, you might notice that I'm really holding that treat super obviously in order to make this exercise as easy as possible. And I don't mind that she's just looking at the treat here at all. I'm trying to keep her from getting too far ahead, but I don't want to be too picky right now. I'm just really trying to get her to show any kind of restraint while staying on one side of me and paying attention to me. I don't care if she's looking at a treat or what. It's just trying to get the action right now so she can understand what I'm asking for. Dogs are not born knowing that humans want them to walk right here next to them. So it's a delicate maneuver. Yes, good. Here, I'm gonna try and vary my speed. What happens if I go really fast? That seems to get her more interested and look at that. She is really, really focused on me right now. That's everything. Yes. There are moments where you and your dog are just so dialed into one another that you can start to take more steps. Here, let's go. Stay. Yes. It's clear that Moira is really soaking a lot of this training up. Thank goodness. That is just incredible. She is looking so good on heel. I love the way a German Shepherd looks when they heel. Okay, good job. Nice work. You guys know that dog reactivity is one of Moira's most significant issues. I really wanna set this up because what you're about to see is probably the single biggest mistake I have made with Moira so far. And I already know this is most likely going to be the single most controversial part of this entire series because of the trainer error you're gonna see from me. And I know that you guys understand that this series is about showing what the actual reality of training dogs is all about. Coming off the training session that you just saw, I have to tell you, I was feeling so encouraged by her progress. I mean, Moira was actually starting to listen to me with dogs that she could see in the distance, and I was incredibly proud of this. And so with only six days left with her, I was hoping to squeeze in one more awesome success with her. So there's this dog park right across the street from where we're training. Hold on. It was closed on this particular day, but what I liked about the scene was that there were smells of dogs that had recently been there, and there was also pretty frequent traffic of dogs walking by on the path near the dog park. So I was hoping to do some testing with Moira so that she could be in an environment where dogs had recently been, plus where dogs currently are, albeit at a distance. Okay. All right. All right, so, oh, Moira, come on, over here, girl. Come on. She sees a dog across the street. I mean, so clearly she still has some issues we need to contend with. Let me create some distance over here. Dog's coming closer. And that distance was a little bit closer than what you saw in the last lesson. But again, I'm trying to keep progress moving. I mean, after all, my goal in the very limited time that I have with her is to desensitize her to other dogs and to reliably be able to get her attention on me in the presence of other dogs so that when she goes to her new home, that person will have some basic control of Moira in a situation like this. Now for this training session, my expectations were certainly far from perfection, but what I was hoping to get from Moira was a sit, a stay, a look at me as dogs walked by several feet away. But I, uh, I seem to have underestimated this particular challenge for Moira. Girl, chill, relax, girl. I'm waiting for the dogs to clear out so we can get back to our car, so right now I'm staying over here. To say that Moira was not ready for this is clearly an understatement. And this was one of those instances where Moira saw the dog and she just completely lost it. She was way over threshold. There was no consoling her at all in that moment. And the mistake that I made here is that I put her in a situation that she was not yet ready for. And by doing this, this could potentially set back not only the progress we've made today, but the progress we've made in recent days. And I know I've seen other people, even other trainers, make Make the same exact mistake. After all, it can be really tempting to just keep pushing through when you think that your dog is ready for it. That's enough, girl. That's enough. Here. Moira, here, come. 
when she first reacts like this, I haven't quite given up. I'm still trying to get her attention onto me. So she's clearly over threshold right here. I mean, I'm trying to create distance to keep her from feeling even more overwhelmed, but Moira just goes bananas. I mean, she's absolutely the worst that I have ever seen her in my time with Moira. No, ma'am. Come here. Come on. Back here, let's go. Over here. Knowing that Moira is not teachable in these moments, I'm not going to choose to have a battle with her and physically correct her here. Instead, my goal is to simply keep control of her, manage her, keep her from getting away from me, and choose to work on this another time. And so to me here, the least aversive method that's likely to keep her from further reacting is simply to manage her and wait for those dogs to clear out since we don't really have an escape route. This is certainly not my proudest moment as a dog trainer, but I think it's so incredibly important for us all to learn from these moments so that more people don't make the same mistake. This was by far the worst outburst I've seen from her to this point, and I'm determined to make it the last one. So in the coming lessons, I'm gonna show you what I do differently to prevent that type of behavior while also making progress and doing so by using the least aversive method that is likely to work. Be sure to get your free Super Chewer box or Bark Box or even both when you sign up for a multi-month subscription at superchewer.com slash dog training and barkbox.com slash dog training. Links below. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok and get a copy of both of my books to have all of the information you need to teach your dog anything. And we'll see all of you in episode nine.